What's up guys, my name is Brandon and Apple just released iOS 14 and iPadOS 14 to the general public after going through eight beta stages over the past couple of months. And in this video, we're gonna take a deep dive into the software and check out more than 100 of the best new features and changes in this update. So we have a lot to cover, so let's just go ahead and dive right into this update. So first off, you can see the size of this update coming from iOS 13.7 will be quite large. It was 4.7 gigabytes on my iPhone 11 Pro, but of course the size of this update will vary depending on your device. And if we head over to our settings and go down to general about and click on 14.0, we can see the build number here for iOS 14.0 is 18A373. And then if we scroll down a little bit further, you could see that we do also have an updated modem firmware from iOS 13.7. So if you were having any type of connectivity issues in iOS 13.7 or any previous version of iOS 13, those could very well be fixed because of this modem firmware update in iOS 14. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into all of the new changes in this massive iOS 14 update. So the first thing you probably noticed on your device and probably the first thing you noticed on my device as well are the widgets up top. So yes, iOS 14, finally in 2020, iOS adds widgets to the home screen. So if we go ahead and tap and hold anywhere on the screen, you will see a plus icon pop up in either the top left or the top right of your screen, depending on the device you're on, and tap on that plus right there, and you will see you have all these widgets populate like so. You can scroll down, you can see a bunch of you know previews of different widgets you can use. If you scroll down even further, you get a list view in alphabetical order of the widgets you can add. You can also search for the widgets right there if you want to. You have smart stacks, you have batteries, you have all these different things you could choose from, which is really nice. So if you wanted to add a widget, so we'll just say the smart stack widget right here, which basically auto rotates widgets to show the most relevant information throughout the day, as you can see right there from the description, we have three different sizes and you have multiple sizes for each widget that you can choose from to add to the home screen. So if you wanna add this one right here, you can see it just goes right there and we have this little smart stack and if you don't like the applications that the smart stack is showing you, you could tap and hold on that and go to edit stack. You can move it around. You can delete the apps from there. You could turn on or off smart rotate. You can also make your own smart stack by having two widgets of the same size and just simply dragging them over top of each other. So these are both already stacks, but I will do it with, let's just go ahead and delete this so I can show you an example of how to make your own stack. So we'll add the calendar, the small one, and then we will add the notes, the small one right there as well. Put these over top of each other and you have your own smart stack that you can go through right there and if you tap and hold on that you can also edit the stack right there or you can edit calendar specifically you know to show different information in there so there's a lot you can do with these widgets here in ios 14 and one thing to keep in mind with these widgets is that they are not interactive widgets so you're not going to see like a play or a next widget for the music. You're not going to see that because Apple has already come out and said that these are not meant to be interactive. They're meant to be just informative and tell you about things going on. So like the music you listen to, it's basically just going to show you what happened last you know, kind of reference points for things. They're not meant to be interactive, at least not the default ones. So we will see third-party widgets with time as developers update their applications. We will start seeing third-party widgets pop up. So you may see something like that with the play and the you know previous and next buttons for something like a Spotify. I'm not sure yet, but we will start seeing more third-party widgets show up with time. And if we slide over to where the widgets used to be in iOS 13, you can see we have a new view here as well. And you do also have third-party widgets down here. If you go to edit, you can see we do have third-party widgets and we have this little customize button at the bottom. If you tap on that, you will see the different third-party widgets you can add right in there. Now also on the home screen, if you want to quickly get through different pages, you can actually haptic press on the page dots at the bottom of the springboard now. So if you go ahead and haptic press on that, you will see it kind of highlights right there. You can go over really quick and you do get haptic feedback as well when you do that. So if you have a ton of applications and you need to just quickly get to like the last page or one of the next pages, you can simply do that by haptic pressing on the three dots there at the bottom. Now, if we go all the way down past our last page of the springboard, you will see we also have a new section here called the app library. And this is actually a massive feature in iOS 14 as well. So you can see it pre-categorizes all of your applications. So you cannot customize these. Apple does this on their own. And you can see we have these suggestions right here. We have our recently added tab, which that is very important. I will tell you about that here in a moment. We have social, we have creativity, entertainment, information and reading, games, shopping and food. So you can see all these categories of folders right here. And if you wanna go into the folder, you can simply tap 
right there, or you could tap, you know, one of these first three icons right here, and it will take you straight into the application like so. And if you tap on search up top, you can see you have all your applications here listed in alphabetical order. You could also tap over here to quickly get to a certain letter. Now, the reason I said that recently added is important is because if you look for the Chrome icon on my springboard, you will not find it anywhere. And that's because it's not on my springboard anywhere. And that's because now with iOS 14, you can actually hide applications. So if I wanted to hide the find my application, I'll simply tap and hold, go to remove application. And you can see there, it does not just simply delete it. It says remove find my, removing from home screen will keep the app in your app library. So if you go to remove from home screen, as you can see there, it no longer shows up on my home screen and it will just appear inside of the app library so I can search for it. Or if it's an application that I just installed, it will show up in my recently added folder right here. And there's also a setting in iOS 14 that makes it so the applications you download from the app store automatically do not install to the home screen. So they will actually just go to the app library and not appear on your springboard. So we can get to that by going to settings, home screen, and then newly downloaded apps, to app library only, not to the home screen. So if you do want that, and I would recommend that just because it keeps your screen a lot more clean and a lot less cluttered with app icons. That way you can only add applications that you use a lot on your springboard. And if you wanted to add one of these to your springboard from the app library, you tap and hold on the icon. So we'll do it for Chrome right here. You can see add to home screen is a button there. If we tap on that, it will add it to the home screen just like so. Now we also have some changes to the control center in iOS 14. So the first thing you'll notice is that we have a home section right here. So it shows home, it shows my home pod there. We also have a lot of empty spaces if I had more home kit devices. And so if I go into my settings and go to control center, you will see a couple of changes here. So we do have the show home controls and also compared to iOS 13, you can see that I can just scroll down and start messing with the controls without having to take an additional step and pressing on customize controls and then being able to customize. So just a little bit easier to customize the control center controls. And we do also have some new controls in here as well. So we have a sleep mode control, which I will talk about the new sleep mode feature as well. We also have sound recognition. Both of those are brand new control center toggles. Also in iOS 14, we get a really awesome new feature called back tap. So if we go into our settings and go to accessibility and then scroll down to touch and then go down all the way to back tap, you can see here we have double tap and triple tap. And basically what this does is that if I double tap on the back of my phone, like where the Apple logo is, it will take me home because that's what I have it set to do. So let's go ahead and try it. Let's double tap like that and take a look at that. It takes me back home just like so. And if I want to change that to something else, so let's say I want to change it to, we'll just do app switcher just for the fun of it, double tap and take a look at that. It takes me to the app switcher very, very easily. And it's actually crazy how many actions you can perform by just simply tapping the back of your phone. I mean, we have all these things like screenshot, volume up, volume down. You have accessibility controls right here. You have scroll gestures. So you can scroll up and down based on just tapping the back of your phone. And it even integrates with shortcuts. So if you have a shortcut set, you can run that shortcut by simply double or triple tapping the back of your phone, which is just insane. A really, really awesome new feature here in iOS 14. Now this feature does also work really well with a case on your phone. So if you do have a case, don't worry, this feature will still work with a case, but this feature does not work for every single iPhone on iOS 14. It does work for all the new iPhones, including the iPhone SE 2020, but it does not work for some of the older phones. Another feature that we've been waiting on for many years is finally here with iOS 14, and that is a brand new small incoming call UI that does not take up the entire screen. So let me go ahead and give myself a call real quick and take a look at this. So this is the new incoming call UI in iOS 14. Not only is it just up there in the top and you can still you know, navigate throughout your device and do whatever you're doing on your phone, but you can also swipe up and it won't even show up right there. And you'll see this little icon in the top left and that will actually silence the call, but it doesn't hang up on the person and it doesn't let them know that you're basically just ignoring their call. So this is a fantastic new feature in iOS 14. And also if you don't like it, you can even go back and revert back to the old way. So if you go into our settings and then go all the way down to phone. So if you go into these settings and go to phone and then go to incoming calls, you'll see you have this section right here where it says when phone is unlocked, display as 
either banner or you can revert back to the full screen if you want that old style that takes up the entire screen for whatever reason you can do that now speaking of phone calls and facetime we can actually now use picture in picture while facetiming so i'm going to go ahead and answer this facetime call right here and take a look at this when i go ahead and swipe up you can see it actually has me in picture in picture right here. And I could just go into other applications and do what I wanna do while I'm on FaceTime and it's in picture in picture. I could swipe it off the screen if I want to and that will pause it. But if I come back onto the screen, it unpauses the phone call. And of course, if you wanna go back to full screen, just simply tap on it like so and you're back in there and you can go ahead and end the call if you want to. So picture in picture for FaceTime is extremely useful. I've used it many times and it works very well and it allows you to go into you know other applications and you know text people while you're on a FaceTime call or text that person while you're on a FaceTime call without it being paused on their screen. Now, not only do we get picture in picture for the FaceTime calls, but we also get picture in picture for videos in iOS 14. So if you have Netflix, Hulu, Apple TV, YouTube, as long as it's through Safari, you can actually have picture in picture. So let me just go ahead and show you guys an example. We'll just use Apple TV for this example. And then I will show you using YouTube as well. So we just go ahead and play, let's just say the morning show right here. And you can see it will start playing the show and I will go back to the home screen once it starts playing and take a look at that. It's still playing there. I can move it around to different corners of my screen. I could double tap to make this bigger or smaller. You can also swipe it over to the side. So if you needed to see something on your screen and you needed that to go away, you will still hear the audio, but the video will just not be able to be seen from the home screen. You can also move that around over there as well. Now, if you want this to work for YouTube videos, you actually have to watch the videos in Safari. So if we go to Safari and we'll just go to YouTube here. So if we play this video in Safari and then we go to the full screen view and then swipe up to go to the home screen, you can see there that we have this video playing in picture in picture. And once again, you can change the size and do everything that you could do like I showed with Apple TV. Now, this does not work with the native YouTube application, at least not yet but there is actually a shortcut that allows you to do that. And I will have that linked down in the description below. Basically the way you do it is you just simply use that shortcut and click on share right here, go to more, and then you will see YouTube PIP and it will actually put that video in picture in picture via a third party method. This is kind of just a workaround to do it inside of the YouTube application. And there is also a toggle inside of settings. So if you go to settings, general picture in picture, you can see there we have a toggle for start picture in picture automatically. Another big change in iOS 14 is that we now have a more compact, smaller Siri. So now if we go ahead and invoke Siri, take a look at that. So we have this little bubble now, as opposed to iOS 13, when it would look like this. It would take up your entire screen and it would just be black and just very ugly. But now in iOS 14, we have a much more modern Siri and it just looks a lot better and it's not as, you know, taking up so much space on your home screen. We also get a lot of changes to the messages application in iOS 14. So I have iOS 13 on the left, iOS 14 here on the right, and you can already tell instantly a massive change. So first off, we don't have the big messages text like we had in iOS 13 in the top left. Also the compose and the three dots there in the top right are a little bit cleaner now on iOS 14. Also, you will notice the big change are these pinned conversations. So I have these big letters up top and that's because you can now pin conversations in messages in iOS 14. So if you wanted to pin a contact to the top of your messages right here, if it's like somebody you talk to a lot, you can simply swipe to the right and you will see a little pin icon right there. Tap on that and they will be pinned to the top of your messages application. And if you wanted a quicker gesture-based method to adding a contact to the pinned messages right here, you could just simply tap and drag the conversation like so up top and it will pin that conversation. And if you want to unpin it, you simply tap and hold and then you will see unpin right there and it will go back or you can simply drag this down. So we'll just go ahead and drag this down. Just put it over top like anywhere down here, let go and it will be unpinned just like so. We also have some major changes to the group chats in iOS 14. So group conversations now have a different layout up top. You can see the bubbles are laid out a little bit differently. And also if we go to the I right here for info, you can see I can actually add a name and a photo. So if I go and tap on that, you can see I can rename the group chat and I can actually add a photo, a main photo for this group chat. So for instance, if I wanted to add like a football, I'll look for a football real quick. So I'll just click on this little emoji icon right here and then search for football. So we'll just go ahead and do this one right here. 
I'll just go ahead and click on done. And you can see there, that is the new group photo for the group chat and everybody on iOS 14 will now see that. And you can also see at the bottom there, it shows that I changed the group photo and other people will see that Brandon changed the group photo. And now it shows up like that. If we go back, it actually shows like this right here. Now you can also mention and reply to individual people inside of group chats. And this is what you will get when you reply or another person replies to a specific message. You will see this little line and it will show the replies right there. And there will actually be a number if there are multiple replies of how many people responded to that specific text message. So if I go ahead and tap and hold on this and then go to reply, you can see here it pops up this menu right here. I could say hi. And you can see there, I did just reply to that message. And now it shows there are two replies to this message. Now, another way to do that, you could actually mention people. So if I just mentioned, I'll just put in, I'll just type in at Brandon. And you can see there it turns gray. If I press space, you can see it will mention Brandon. So I'll just say LOL. And you can see there that person will now get notified when I mention them in the group chat. And this works also really well if you don't want to get a lot of notifications. So basically if you reply to a person or if you mention another person, only that person will get the notifications when the text message is sent. And if we go over to our settings and go to messages and scroll down, you will see that we have a toggle here for mentions and notify me. It says when this is on, you will be notified when your name is mentioned, even if conversations are muted. So that is a great feature. And then also down here, we have another new toggle for message filtering, filter unknown sender. So if we go back to the messages and then go back, back again, you will see that we have different sections here for all messages, known senders or unknown senders. If you get a lot of, you know, messages from, you know, just spam, or if it's like FedEx saying you have, you know, a package coming, those can be in unknown senders. And if you don't want to see all those, you can just stay inside of known senders to have a much cleaner and less spammy looking message list. Now, also when you're inside of a conversation, you'll notice that the picture is bigger. So the person's picture will be a little bit bigger and more pronounced right there. And actually, if you tap on the eye to view info, you will see that the layout is a lot better now in iOS 14, a lot easier to navigate. You can call video, email, info right from there. Whereas in iOS 13, you'd have to tap on this again to get that information. So just a much better layout for the contact cards. And you can also now see when the person is typing without actually being in the conversation itself. So this is another reason to have contacts pinned. If you wanna see when that person is typing, you can quickly see that by simply having them pinned. But of course it does work if they are not pinned as well. So I'll just go ahead and put this down here just so you can see that's what it looks like when the conversation is not pinned and that person is typing. We also get some massive changes to the Apple Music application. So you can see here on the left is iOS 13, on the right is iOS 14. We have a ton of different UI changes here and also the bottom, the tabs are different. So we have listen now instead of for you and you can see everything is kind of rearranged there as well. But the biggest difference is if we go into a song, take a look at the difference here. So in iOS 13, we just had a white background for every song and that was it. But now in iOS 14, we have a dynamic background that changes based on what we're listening to. And you can see there it moves a little bit in the background and it's dynamic. So this isn't the best album artwork. So I'm going to find something with a little more into it. So we're going to go ahead and do this one. It has a little bit of color in it, blue and white. So take a look at the background there. It adapts based on the album artworks, dynamic color. So super cool, a lot more immersive looking. You can also see that the icons and just the whole, you know, play pause and everything is a little bit more compact. It's a little bit smaller and closer together. So it's easier to press. Also, if we go into the queue, you will see that we have a new button here that we did not have in iOS 13. And this is actually called the autoplay feature. So it'll look like this little infinity sign right here. And that is a feature called autoplay. So when you run out of music to play, so like if you were playing a uh, album and the album ended this, if you have this enabled, it will continue playing music that is similar to the music you just listened to. So basically your music will never pause and you will just have endless amounts of music that sounds similar or that is similar to the music you were just listening to, which I've been using this for months and this is an absolute must feature to keep on at all times. I love it. We also have an updated look to the playlist view here. So we have the playlists that look a lot better. So the album art is like the focal point now, instead of just kind of looking like a lot going on and kind of confusing here in iOS 13, a lot easier to read and the buttons are up in the top right and just everything is a lot better and more compact here in iOS 14. Now, speaking of audio and music, 
the AirPods also get a lot of new features here in iOS 14. So the first thing is going to be spatial audio. So this is a feature for the AirPods Pro only, and this is going to give you really immersive 3D sound with the AirPods Pro when watching movies or TV shows. Now I made a full video explaining this feature, so if you wanna watch that, I will leave it linked up in the cards above and also down in the description below, but spatial audio is an incredible feature that uses the gyroscopes and basically just sounds like audio is coming from your phone, even though it's in your ears. It's really hard to explain. You guys have to watch that video to fully understand it, but spatial audio is now here in iOS 14. Now we also get auto switching for both the AirPods and the AirPods Pro with iOS 14. So if you have multiple devices that are hooked up to the same Apple ID, you're gonna be able to switch the audio source very quickly and easily without actually having to manually connect it. So I'm gonna show you guys a demo right here. So I'm playing the music on this iPhone 11 Pro and take a look at when I go ahead and switch over and I start playing music on my iPhone 11 Pro Max. Look at that, it automatically connected my AirPods and the music is playing right now in my ears. Obviously it's on mute, so it's not actually playing, but it would be playing right away. If I switch, take a look at that, that pauses, it starts playing here and vice versa. And I could do this with the iPad, I could do this with my Mac, you know, you could do this with Apple TV. Auto switch is a great feature and it just makes the AirPods that much more essential for the iOS and the Apple ecosystem. Now you also get low battery alerts with the AirPods in iOS 14. So if your battery is running low, you will get a little pop-up in the top of the screen that tells you your battery is running low, which is very, very convenient. Now we also get a feature called reduce loud sound. So if we go into our settings and then go to sounds and haptics, you'll see that we have a new section here for reduce loud sounds. And it says your iPhone can analyze headphone audio and reduce any sound that is over a set decibel limit. So if you didn't wanna to listen to anything over like 90 decibels, you could have that set right there. Now I mentioned the sleep mode toggle here in the control center earlier, and that is a new feature. So let's go ahead and check that out. So if we go into our settings and go to clock and go to alarm, you will notice that we now have a new setup here. So it says sleep, wake up, and we have no alarm right there. So if I go ahead and tap on change, you can see here sleep is off. So to turn this on, just simply tap on turn on and let's go to change. And you can see we get this wheel right here that shows us how much time we're gonna get of sleep if we go to bed at a certain time. So I went to bed at 1.05 a.m. and I wanted to wake up, you know, it'll turn orange if I don't meet my current sleep goal. So if you want to change the sleep goal, we go down to the bottom here and it shows my sleep schedule. Go to edit sleep schedule and you can see the full schedule right here. You can see your sleep goal right there. So if you wanna set your sleep goal, you could change how much sleep you need in order to hit your goal. You could change your everyday bedtime. You could change it for, you know, if you want it to be different on the weekends, you could change that right here. And this is just a fantastic feature. It's very, very well done. We do also have wind down, which is a feature right here that basically will put your phone in wind down mode. And you do also have shortcuts right here as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this so I can show you guys what this actually looks like. So I'm gonna set my bedtime for 1 a.m. That way wind down is turned on. So if I go into here and edit sleep schedule, you'll see that wind down starts 15 minutes before my alarm or before my bedtime, I should say. So if I go to the lock screen, I should be in wind down mode right now. So yes, as you see right there, and then it says, good evening, bedtime is set for 1 a.m. Then I have this little toggle right here for shortcuts. If I tap on that, I have these different shortcuts that I added in there, and you can edit these as well by tapping on edit. Let's go ahead and unlock the device, and you could change your wind down shortcuts right here. So you can have a lot of different things you could choose from right here. I would definitely go ahead and look into that. But sleep mode is awesome in iOS 14. I use it every single night, and you guys should definitely explore around these different settings in here. Now there is also a way to skip your alarm very easily from the lock screen. So I just set my alarm for 1 a.m. It's 12.59 right now. If I have the alarm set right here, you can see there is a little alarm icon right there. If I tap on that, you can see at the bottom, we have a button that says change alarm or skip alarm. If I go ahead and tap on skip alarm, the alarm will not play. Now I know it's hard to see, that's on purpose. iOS automatically dims the screen down to like zero just because it knows you are sleeping. So that's cool. And then when you skip it, it does say skipped right there. So a lot of cool features now with sleep mode and wind down in iOS 14. We also get some nice new changes inside of Safari. So now in Safari, if we go ahead and tap on these two A's up in the status bar right here, and then go down, you will see that we have a new section here called Privacy Report. And this is actually where it shows any type of ad trackers that are following you around 
uh, while you're web browsing. So if I go ahead and tap on that, you can see here it shows in the last 30 days, two trackers prevented from profiling you. So it blocked two different trackers and it showed that 20% of my websites that I visited contacted trackers and it will actually show you the websites and exactly what those trackers are. So in this case, it was just YouTube and double click. It's just advertising and Google syndication is also advertising for AdSense. So really nothing to worry about, but this is great for privacy. If you have been on sketchy websites and you want to see, you know, what websites are tracking you and what type of trackers they are, this is a great way to do it. Now we also have a built-in translator in Safari in iOS 14. So you can see here, I'm on a Spanish website. If I tap these two A's right here, you can see that we have translate to English. If I tap that, it happens in real time. So take a look at that. And it actually works flawlessly here in iOS 14. So that is great. We do also have a standalone translate application now as well in iOS 14, as you can see right here. So if you wanted to translate stuff, definitely go ahead and check out the new translate application in iOS 14. It is very, very useful. You can type to text or you can also voice to text when you are translating. And then also in Safari, you have a password monitor. So basically it will check if your password has been pwned pretty much. If it's been involved in like a data breach, it will warn you that that password has been you know used. And then also we do have a new UI when we go ahead and tap and hold on the tabs icon right here. You can see it looks a lot cleaner than it did in iOS 13 or any previous version of iOS. So a lot of nice changes here to Safari in iOS 14, not to mention that it is faster in terms of just overall raw performance than it was in iOS 13. Now we also have some changes to the camera application in iOS 14 as well. So the first thing is that we actually have a new setting to prioritize faster shooting. So if we go to our settings right here and then go down to the camera right here, you will see that we have prioritize faster shooting under photo capture. So it says intelligently adapt image quality when rapidly pressing the shutter. So that is a new toggle right there. And actually you can now shoot photos up to 90% faster than you could in iOS 13 or any previous version of iOS, which is really, really impressive. Now we also get the quick toggles in video mode for all devices. So this was an iPhone 11 exclusive feature last year, and now it is here for all devices, including like the iPhone SE and the iPhone 6S. So now you can just tap on like 4K and it will change to 1080. And also on the frame rate, you can change the frame rate and everything right there without having to go into the actual settings to change the frame rate and the quality. Now you do need to make sure that the feature is turned on. So if you go into your settings and then go to record video and then go down to video format control, that's what you need to have enabled in order to change the video quality and the frame rate inside of the camera application without having to go back into settings to change it like you used to. We also have a new exposure compensation control. So if we go ahead and swipe up right here. You can see this little plus and minus right there. That is the exposure. You can lock the exposure into place or change the exposure just like so before you take your photo, which is very handy if you are into taking photos with your iPhone. And then we do also have the exclusive iPhone 11 quick take video feature on the iPhone XR and the iPhone XS now. So if you're in the photo and you go ahead and tap and hold and swipe over to the right, it starts recording a video that is now available for the XR and the XS as well. You can go ahead and tap on done when you're done. You can also do that from the volume controls. So if you hold down like this, if you keep holding down while you're in photos, it will start recording a video. And then when you let go, it will stop. And then finally, inside of camera, we do also have another new toggle here for mirror front camera. So this will make your selfies look realistic instead of being flipped around like they normally look. We also have some changes inside of the photos application. So if you go to photos and we zoom out a little bit here on our photos, you can see we no longer have a plus minus up in the top right. It is now these three dots right here. If you tap on those three dots, you will see we have some new options here as well. So before when you would do that, all it gave you the option for was just to zoom in or zoom out. But now in iOS 14, you get zoom in, zoom out, filter, and also show map. You also have edit actions down here as well. So if you want to filter, you can actually filter this by favorites, edited photos and video. So you just have more that you can do inside of the photos application now. And then one of my favorite features is that now in iOS 14, you can caption photos. So if you go ahead and swipe up on this photo right here, you can add a caption. So if I wanted to add, just say wallpaper so that if I wanted to in the future search for photos for wallpaper, and maybe even I can just put mountains as well. That way, when I search for it in the future, I can find that photo because sometimes 
Apple will detect, you know, if it's like a car or something like that. But if you want to add specifics about that photo, you could put it there so that when you search later on down the road in the future, you could find this photo again. So I really like that feature here in iOS 14. Also in iOS 14, you can now zoom in much further on photos than you could in iOS 13. So here's an example of my car. I'm gonna zoom in as much as I can in iOS 13, and that is about as much as I can zoom in in iOS 13. So it's on that headlight right there. I'm gonna zoom in even more here and show you guys in iOS 14 how much more you can zoom in. So take a look at that. I zoomed in way more than I could in iOS 13 on that headlight. So this is a cool little underrated feature in iOS 14. You can zoom in a lot more on photos. Now Apple has been all about privacy lately. So iOS 14 definitely has a lot of features and changes that are catered towards privacy. So the first one is going to be the precise location. So if we go to our settings and then go to privacy right here, location services, and then we go to any of our applications right here. So let's just say, uh, I don't know, we'll go to Instagram right here. Take a look at this feature down here that's going to be here for all applications now, precise location. So it says, allows apps to use your specific location. With this setting off, apps can only determine your approximate location. So I don't really need Instagram to know exactly where I'm at at all times. I'll just let them know my approximate location. So that is a new feature now that is great. I think it's going to give a lot of people some peace of mind knowing that their phone's not tracking their exact pinpoint location and more of just an approximate. So that is definitely something to consider. And obviously for camera, you want camera to be like your precise location and you know, other things you want to be your precise location, but like social media apps and things like that, like the maps, obviously that needs to be precise location, but some of these do not need to know your exact location. So it's nice that you can now change that in iOS 14. Now also while you're using iOS 14, you will notice up in the top right. So take a look at the top right here. You will see a little dot up there. So it is green and that indicates that the phone has used or is using the camera application. And if it turns into an orange color, that means it was using the microphone. So if I go ahead and swipe down right here, you can see it shows that the camera is currently using the camera, obviously. So if I went into, let's just go into Instagram so I can show you guys how this works with a different application. So we'll go to Instagram, go to stories right here, and it is using my camera right now. So if I go ahead and swipe down, it shows that Instagram is using my camera right now. So if we wanted to do this for audio, I'll just go into, let's just go into voice memos. And if I record a voice memo and then go out of it, you can see there that it shows an orange icon showing that the microphone was recently used and it was recently used by the voice memos application. So now you will be notified via a green or orange dot in the top left of your screen when your phone is using your camera or your microphone. So once again, great peace of mind for your privacy. And you'll also notice in applications now in iOS 14 that developers are required to get your permission before tracking you in any way. So you will notice a lot of times when you download an application, it will ask you multiple things to make sure it's okay with you if you're being tracked. And then another great privacy feature is that you have limited photo library access now. So if you don't want an application to have access to all of your photos and only photos that you select, you can change that. So you can see right here, I'm in my Instagram settings. If I go to photos, you can see here, you can have selected photos, all photos or none. So if you did not want Instagram having access to all your photos, just do select photos and then you can edit these selected photos here as well. So some great privacy features here in iOS 14 and Apple is just going to continue building on those with future versions. Now we also have some changes inside of the notes application. So you'll see up top, we have these three dots now instead of the share and the little person up in the top right. So if we click on these three dots, you'll see that we have a change here from what we had in iOS 13. So that was just the share right there. That's all it did. And in iOS 14 now, we get all these options right here. So we have the scan, the pin, the lock, share the note, find a note. We have all these different things we can do now from that new action menu. We also have a feature called shape recognition, which will turn your horrible doodles into much better looking doodles. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a circle and I'm just going to hold after I draw the circle and take a look at what happened. So that was actually too bad of a circle to even register. So there's a circle right here. I'll tap and hold. And there you go. You can see it makes it like a perfect circle right there. Same with, let's just say a triangle. I can't even draw. So we'll do it like this. And you can see there, it tries to make the best out of that horrible triangle I just drew. So it works for shapes and it works for things like arrows as well. So I got and drew an arrow like this and then just kept holding. 
after I drew the arrow. You can see there it tries to make the best of that awful arrow. So we'll try this one right here. So there we go. And it makes a perfect arrow out of that terrible drawing that I just did. So shape recognition is awesome. It works for the iPhone and for the iPad. And then also in iOS 14, the search is much better. So you also have all these suggestions here as well when you go to the search tab. So just a lot of big improvements to the notes application. You will definitely notice it once you start using it. We also have some new accessibility features as well. So if we go to our settings and then go to accessibility right here and then go to sound recognition, this is brand new in iOS 14. So it says your iPhone will continuously listen for certain sounds and using on-device intelligence will notify you when sounds may be recognized. And if we go to sounds, you can see here that your phone can now actually recognize alarms like a fire alarm, uh, you know, smoke alarm. If you have cats or, or dogs, you could see when they're maybe meowing or barking. You have all these household things, baby crying, all these different things that your iPhone can actually detect if you are hard of hearing. And I think this is a great, great feature. I've used it, but obviously, you know, I'm not hard of hearing or anything like that. So I can't really see the big benefit for it myself, but I know it's going to be a big benefit to somebody who is hard of hearing and, you know, or maybe even deaf and just needs an alarm, uh, a visual to see when something is going on in their house that maybe, you know, you have to rely on hearing for. So great new feature there for accessibility called sound recognition. There is also a toggle for this inside of the control center, as you can see right here, and it can turn on or off right there. We also have voiceover recognition as well. So if we go into our settings and go to voiceover right here, and you can see we have voiceover recognition right here. So that is also new in iOS 14. And then we also have headphone accommodation. So if we go into our settings, accessibility, and then to AirPods, and then to audio accessibility settings, headphone accommodations, you can see we have all these right here. So we have tune audio for a balanced tone, a vocal range, brightness. You can also change this right here from slight, moderate to strong. So pretty cool right there. And you can apply that to the phone and also media, or you can, you know, turn those off if you want to. Also inside of the calendar and inside of the clock, we now get a new scroll wheel. So we go ahead and tap on the plus right here to maybe like add an event and go to the time right here, you will notice a pretty big difference. So I'm going to pull up iOS 13 over here on the left. So we're going to go and tap on the plus right here and then go to the time. So instead of showing up like that, now in iOS 14, we can either type in manually. So if we wanted to do like 250, I could type it in like that, or I could also scroll right there. So it's kind of a hybrid of a scroll wheel plus a manual type in. And I just think the whole layout looks better as well. The AM PM looks better right there. It's easy to toggle those back and forth. And even the month right there looks a lot different and a lot better here in iOS 14. And then also if you click this icon right here to see your events, you'll see that we no longer have those lines and it just looks a little bit cleaner here in iOS 14. The weather application also gets a massive improvement here in iOS 14. So first off, you can see it shows the high and the low right below the temperature right there. You can see we also do get alerts for like if there was like a severe thunderstorm warning or a riptide current, you can see it shows up right there from the National Weather Service. Also, when you look at the future forecast, you can see that the icons are a little bit different. They look a lot cleaner, a little bit more flat. And also it shows the percent chance of rain for these days instead of just showing that it's going to be raining from Wednesday until Monday. So it shows the percent now uh, for that rain. So also we have this little graph for the air quality, which looks a lot better than just saying air quality index 30. So it's a little bit more visual and you can see a lot better uh, as far as what the air quality is. And then if we scroll all the way down, you will see that we have weather four and you can actually open it up in maps. So, and also if you did for your current location, it would actually get you the weather down to your exact street. And that is because Apple just recently acquired the dark sky application. So the weather in general in iOS 14 is going to be more accurate because Apple acquired dark sky, which is just more accurate in terms of weather. And once again, it tracks the weather down to your exact street and not just the whole city. So it's a lot more accurate now in iOS 14 in addition to all of the new UI changes. And then also another thing, when you want to check the weather for another city, but you don't want to add it to your list of cities. So let's just say, we'll just go to Toronto. If I go ahead and tap on Toronto right here, you can see in iOS 13, it would just automatically add Toronto to my list. 
And that's why my list is so big. You can see the dots there. I have so many different weathers. And that's because you have to add it to see the weather for that place. But now in iOS 14, it doesn't force you to add that city to your weather. You could just take a little quick peek at it and you can either cancel or you get the option to add it to your list. But like I said, I just wanted to peek at the weather. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on cancel. And you can see there, it doesn't add it to my list and it's not as cluttered as it was in iOS 13. Also, there are some minor changes inside of the app store. So you can see right here before it would just show at the top the number it was on the charts and also the age. But now you see a little bit more. So you see the ratings right there. You also see the developer's name, the language and also the size right away. So without having to scroll all the way down, you see all of that information right there. And also the game center is back in iOS 14. So if you go ahead and tap on your name right there, you will see game center right there. And it shows your friends, your achievements, your games, and things like that, which is pretty neat if you are into gaming on your iOS device. Also in iOS 14, you can see here in settings, general iPhone storage, we now have a search little icon there in the top right in iOS 14. And this will allow us to search for applications that are taking up space on our device inside of storage. And from here, of course, if you're searching for, let's just say Instagram, tap on it. And from there, it takes you right to this page right here where you can offload or delete it. Also the spotlight search, which is now actually called the universal search has also improved greatly in iOS 14. So you'll see a lot more relevant results for whatever you search inside of the universal search right here. Also in iOS 14, you can now watch 4k YouTube videos. So you don't have to have a 4k display to watch 4k videos, of course. And you can actually now do that in iOS 14 because it does have the codec built in to watch 4k videos on YouTube. And then there's just a lot of other small UI enhancements all throughout iOS 14. And actually there are some new wallpapers as well. So if you go to wallpapers, choose new wallpaper and then go to stills, you can see these are our new wallpapers here for iOS 14. And then also for the retro Apple wallpapers, you now have a dark mode in iOS 14, whereas you did not have dark mode for that wallpaper or that set of wallpapers in iOS 13. So yeah, those are some of the main new features and changes here in iOS and iPad OS 14. So now let's talk about the performance, the battery life and the connectivity. So first off, performance is amazing on iOS 14. It is definitely faster and the animations are definitely smoother than they were in iOS 13. And everybody who's installed this that I've known in real life and also, you know, just through the comments and things like that have also reported this. So you could definitely expect to see better performance with iOS 14 compared to iOS 13. And as far as the battery life goes, battery life seems to be about on par with iOS 13.7. It's not quite there yet, but we are getting close. Probably 14.1 or 14.2 is when we will see battery life on par with iOS 13.7. It's not quite there yet, but we are getting there. Like I said, I still get through about 75% of the day without needing to charge versus maybe 80 to 85% through the day on iOS 13.7. And as far as connectivity goes, connectivity seems to be solid in iOS 14 as well. I have no issues with phone calls. I have no issues with my AirPods, you know, randomly disconnecting or anything like that. Like I had in iOS 13, I've not had that issue yet in iOS 14. So, things are looking really, really good so far for iOS 14. But anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. Those were a lot of new features, but there are more hidden features and more in-depth coverage on iOS 14 to come here on the channel. So definitely make sure you guys are subscribed so you don't miss those upcoming videos. I do have a lot planned, but I also wanna hear from you guys. So what is your favorite feature in iOS 14? Did I mention your favorite feature in this video? Let me know all your thoughts down in the comment section below. Also, let me know what device you're using and how it's running for you. And also, if you made it all the way through to the end of this video, leave the, I don't know, leave like the vomit emoji. I don't know, leave something that lets me know that you've listened this far into the video. So I appreciate you guys for watching these videos and supporting as always. This video was a really long one. So I appreciate you, especially if you made it all the way to the end. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.